This is section 13.8, and this is example two. So we just introduced the divergence theorem and when it applies. And so in this problem, we're going to calculate the flux integral uh, or the surface integral when we have a surface one, which is going to be our paraboloid. And you can see the equation of the paraboloid. And that's going to be, again, right here, surface one. Uh, similar to that example that I had sort of introduced in the last video. And then you have a plane, you have the xy plane, which is z equal to zero. Um, and that's going to be the bottom of this three-dimensional object. So if we were to use techniques um, from section 13.6, let's say, we would have to calculate this surface integral, this flux integral, by taking the surface integral of S1, and then we're going to, or we would have to then add the surface integral S2. And, you know, this isn't necessarily awful, but it certainly will take a little bit more time because there are two different calculations there. Uh, versus, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to do the triple integral over E. E, again, is the, um, that's going to be this entire three-dimensional object that's formed. So E of the divergence of the vector field F dV. So uh, let's start with calculating the divergence of F. And the divergence will be your vector of partial derivatives multiplied by the vector field F, x squared, xy, and z. And what we get out of this multiplication is going to be 2x plus x plus 1, which is 3x plus 1. So our triple integral over E will be 3x plus 1 dV. OK, so then let's go ahead and take a look at this object that's formed here. Now we have to think back to uh, chapter 12, because now that we have this all set up, we're, we're trying to just calculate a triple integral. And we have an equation. Um, we have our picture that we're looking at, and we got to go back to chapter 12 in our mind for a moment and come up with the best strategy for this. And we're going to land on um, converting this to cylindrical coordinates. So remember, with cylindrical coordinates, you have theta, you have r, and then you have z equal to z. So let's do um, let's do r on the outside, 0 to 2. Now, the way we get r again is that we project this down on the xy plane and uh, z equal to 4 minus x squared minus y squared is really z equal to 4 minus r squared and you know if we think about that if z is 0 then that is simply just r squared equal to 4 so what we have is just a circle with a radius of 2 okay so r is between 0 and 2 then theta is between 0 and 2 pi and then z, uh, again, take a look at your object. The lower boundary is when z is 0. And the upper boundary is this actual paraboloid here. So we're going to go from 0 to 4 minus r squared. Um, the, um, the 3x plus 1 will change into 3 times r cosine theta plus 1. But remember, we had to multiply that by r because of our conversion. So we have 3 uh, r squared cosine theta plus r, and we have dz d theta dr. OK, again, all of that stuff was chapter 12, just the old stuff in chapter 12 we did. OK, let's go ahead and work through the antiderivatives. I'm going to pause and write this out. So here's our first antiderivative in terms of z. So we have the antiderivative, and then z equal to 0. Uh, and then the upper limit of 4 minus r squared. So then what we have for our next step here would be um, the integral from 0 to 2 and the integral from 0 to 2 pi. And then it makes sense for us to distribute this. So what we get is uh, 12 r squared cosine theta plus 4 r minus, uh, let's see, 3 r to the fourth cosine theta and then minus r cubed. And then we have, again, d theta dr. OK, so then our next antiderivative will be in terms of theta. So I'll pause this and write that one out as well. 
All right, so there's our antiderivative, and our last step here, uh, which we can just do together, would be the antiderivative in terms of r. So we get 4 pi times r squared minus uh, 1 half pi times r to the fourth. Then we're going to evaluate it from 0 to 2. So then we get 16 pi minus 2 to the fourth is 16 divided by 2 is 8 pi. And our answer then is going to be 8 pi. So that's example two for the divergence theorem. So in our last video, we will finish and do example three.